The King of the Monsters gets a stylized release. Here's your look at the X Plus Garage Toy 2001 Godzilla. Kaibutsuya created the first Defo Real figures for X Plus way back in 2014. Of all things focusing on, yes, you guessed it, Godzilla. The success of those figures led to Starry's creating new figures under the banner of the Defo Real line, giving you unique and creative styles to some of your favorite characters from film. Now, to get this review underway, we're going to first figure out how tall and perhaps how long Godzilla is. Taking the Ultra Megatron 5000, that's the name I've given it after all, taking it right to the very top of Godzilla's head, you're looking at a figure that's a very small 4.1 inches, about 4 inches in height, which in centimeters works out to be 10 and a half, 10.5 centimeters tall. Switching this all back to the basics, right back from where we started from, let's figure out how long Godzilla is. I'm sure you guys will want to know that as well. So from the tail to the end of his snout, and we'll stop it right there. Stopping it right there. Sometimes it, sometimes it holds up, sometimes it freezes up on me. Seven inches, about seven inches in length, which again in centimeters works out to be 18.1, a little over 18 centimeters long. Getting a look at Godzilla. Big thank you, by the way, to the folks over at Star Race who was nice enough to send this over my way. This is technically under the banner of X Plus. X Plus is being the manufacturer or the line, the company lines releasing these. And this is the Garage Toy Godzilla, specifically dated from 2001. Not the release of this toy, but it's based on the 2001 Godzilla, if that makes any sense. What you're getting, though, is a very small rendition of Godzilla. And for size comparisons, just to tell you exactly how small, because we've already looked at dimensions, but really, how does that translate? What does that translate to? Of all the things I can use as a comparison, as we just recently looked at it, this is the Defo Real release of Friday 13th's Jason Voorhees from 2009 remake. And yes, you would never likely see the pairing or the versus film of Godzilla versus uh, Jason Voorhees, because I certainly would know that there would be very little in the way of fighting going on. Basically, that would be the end of Jason Voorhees. But this gives you a rough idea of how big the smaller Godzilla is. It's about two-thirds the height of Jason Voorhees. I really do like the design of this Godzilla. He's super cute, I have to admit, in still a very ferocious type of way. Something that this company excels in doing, X, uh, X Plus, that is, is exquisite paint. Something of which Star Ace has adopted themselves when releasing their versions of the uh, the Defo series, which we've already looked at, the Defo Real series. So what we're getting here with Godzilla is, like I said, a very short, super deformed rendition of the King of the Monsters. Don't let his size fool you, though. You can see the exquisite amount of sculpting and paint that they've put into such a small package. One element, because I like to always point out some of my favorite things about collectibles, and then you guys can let me know down below some of your favorite things about these collectibles that we look at. We are going to be talking, obviously, about the sculpt, and the proof is certainly in the pudding as you're looking at the video, hopefully done well enough to do a service to this. But not only do I really like the sculpt, but things specifically I really like about this Godzilla is his eyes. Now, no pupils will be found on this Lizard King. Instead, what we're actually treated to is sort of a dead stare. 
staring right back at you. And despite that, despite for the fact that there are no pu pupils in these peepers getting a gander right back at you, you still feel as if he's looking right at you. I, I do like the coloring of it. It's not quite white. In fact, the way that the light hits it, it actually comes across a little bit more like the color of a pearl. Speaking of color, what glorious color is represented here in the teeth? Sort of not, again, white. Godzilla would not be inclined to brush his teeth, nor could I imagine a toothbrush large enough to brush this lizard's teeth. But you can see that the teeth are slightly, slightly more of an, a yellowish white. And they've got a sheen to them that captures the light, much like the eyeballs. But you see the light just bouncing right off of it. I like also that they put a slight slick coat over top of his nose, give it that sense that you can imagine it would be a wet nose. I don't know if Godzilla would have a wet nose, but certainly based on this smaller rendition of him, you can certainly see that yes, he does. Certainly at least based on the paint. Paint is about what you would expect for Godzilla to be. A combination of mostly dark grays, blacks, and medium grays, kind of touching the tips of, as you can see, his scales here. It actually comes across a little bit more like fur, but certainly Godzilla does not have fur to him. You can see, again, like just imagining as somebody would have taken the time, and we don't pay, I feel, proper service to the sculptors that are behind these pieces. Often at times you get a figure in the mail or from the store, you put it on the shelf and of course you admire it. But to think that somebody much like the Jason Voorhees that we looked at, much also like the Pennywise the Clown, all of these figures somebody would have sat down, meticulously carved and sculpted all these details that we almost seem to take for granted. That's why hopefully with reviewers doing things like this on YouTube, you get the benefit of being able to see and hopefully in that appreciate the care and the detail that they put into pieces like this. Now, he's not all primarily the tried and true go-to of grays. Godzilla does get a little bit of what looks to be almost like a beige. Now, this is, could possibly be for the way he's been walking through muddy terrain that it's found its way, caked its way onto his skin. I'm no private investigator, but certainly if I was to look at the clues and judging by the fact that this does still appear slightly wet, I do feel as if he's just recently walked through this muddy terrain. It also seems as if he's also picked up something too, probably from the same similar environment. As you can see, he's got a little bit of that wet cream color caked its way onto his claws as well. The claws aren't quite the same coloring as his teeth. Both his hands and his feet have a coloring slightly lighter than the one that's presently featured here on his teeth themselves. Um, you get the scales running down the course of the spine. I could not talk about a Godzilla without mentioning the spines. Uh, the certainly the larger platelets sticking up about mid back while he's got the small smaller spines making its way from the in in between his brow here making all the way its journey down past the platelet town and down to the very end of its tail uh, like i said the platelets these larger spikes that are sticking out from his body very nicely painted here Actually, the camera picks it up slightly showing a little bit more blue. In hand, looking at it beyond the camera, it actually does look like it's a little bit more of a lighter gray on the edges, uh, slightly darker medium gray on the interior. But the camera actually is picking up a little bit, reading it a little bit more as blue. This guy doesn't have any posability to speak of. The defo real line uh, sort of scales itself as being a, a line of statued collectibles, something that you could put on the shelf and, like I said, admire. For that reason, uh, Godzilla doesn't have any tar articulation in the arms, doesn't have any articulation in the head, and most certainly, definitely, doesn't have any articulation in the legs, like the other two pieces that we had a look at. Uh, what the trade-off, though, for this, much like the other two pieces that we had a look at, is the fact that you're getting a fantastic little, cuter version of Godzilla that you can put on the shelf and just admire from its sculpts and fantastic paintwork.
Now the Godzilla release here was done by X Plus Garage Toy, but I believe it's the case much like the King Kong Skull Island vinyl figure that we also looked at on this channel that's likely distributed by the folks over at Star Ace if you're looking to pick one up for yourself. Speaking of Star Ace, a big thank you once again to Star Ace for taking the time and sending this one over along with the Defo Real Pennywise open mouth version and the Friday 13th Jason Voorhees that we've looked at in previous videos. If you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, I do believe this one is available right now online if you are looking to source this one out and pick it up for yourself. With Godzilla King of the Monsters fast approaching and going to hit theaters really, really soon, anybody who's interested in picking up Godzilla pieces, which the numbers continue to grow daily, don't overlook this little one. He is cute. He is a little super deformed versus maybe the more realistic approaches to the King of the Monsters, but there's something charming to be said. And certainly for a size, spacing being the hardest commodity sometimes for collectors, um, finances may not always be the issue. It's space. So if you are looking to pick up a smaller version of Godzilla to put on your shelf of already occupied shelf, Maybe look no further than the X Plus Garage Toy Godzilla from 2001. If you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other Star Ace reviews, there's a whole playlist just for you. Well, and for you, and for you, and a whole bunch of you if you haven't done so already. Speaking of, if you haven't done so already, make sure as well you hit that little subscribe button down below because certainly more videos, possibly even like this, will be coming soon. So stay tuned for those. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you guys next time.